Okay, well, welcome to the Genesis Weekly Video. Uh, Wayne and I are happy to be here today telling you what, what went on in the week. Wayne, you have done a very good job of convincing me that the stock market is a discounting mechanism for what's going to be happening six to nine months from now. Ergo, the big disconnect between Main Street and Wall Street. But the market was down this week. So does that mean the market's having uh, a changing its opinion of what's going to be going on six to nine months from now? Well, the news flow this week was more negative than positive uh, to do with, you know, the outbreak of COVID in the Sun Belt and maybe markets lowering the expectations of, of the improvement in, into Q3 and Q4. And as well, the, you know, there's some issues around the financials, uh, the there's a stress test and another one coming this fall as, you know, as announced by the Fed. And they're also putting controls on their ability to pay dividends. They have to have the earnings if they want to pay the dividends. So it's, which makes sense given this point, this juncture. But those two, a bit, a bit of news, both on the COVID side and, and the bank side did not help matters. Also Nike missed as well. Nike's been a real darling. It wasn't that bad of a miss, but they, they did miss. But they're, they're Online sales were up 70%, so stock was off 5 6% today. So those are kind of three bad things that kind of drove the market this week so in terms of the COVID hanging around longer. Uh, some Still some issues with, with the banks and, and maybe retail getting hit a bit harder here. Right. Also, uh, the Fed also said no buybacks, bank buybacks, which has been supporting the market too. So I always worry, as you know, about the plumbing, the credit side, and I see that those moves by the Fed uh, really – trying to get ahead of any problems that might happen on the credit side by addressing the bank situation. Yeah. So we should view that as a good thing, that they're on the ball. Yeah, they, no, I, I view that as a really solid move by the Fed, that they're right. doing the responsible thing and not going to pay, make pay out cash flow to shareholders yeah. uh, if they still have financial solvency issues. Which is what so. they did in 09 with Obama's money, and you know, so yeah. it's better this time. Yeah. Um, when we talked in April about rebalancing back to a policy asset mix, even at, with our accounts at Genus, uh, there's a fair amount of news out there about institutional clients, some big money, stock market having done so well this quarter, rebalancing to June 30th quarterly, not at, not at Genus, this is in the big, big world out there. And those numbers are uh, pretty big. Do you think that's having an influence? Are people trying to get ahead of that trade of selling stocks and buying bonds? A couple of things. I'm not a really big flow of funds type uh, investor. I just think usually when people people know this is coming, they'll be day traders. They'll be will be trading that kind of flow flow data. So it tends to get discounted in advance. I would say. But but secondly, the numbers I've seen have not. They've been between 37, 40 billion to say 80 billion. The the U.S. equity market is 37 trillion. So that's right less than 1%, so it's just a, it's a drop in the bucket, if you will. A question from a client, uh, Hong Kong. What do you think the effect on capital flows will be for, with what's going on over there? Well, you know, Hong Kong has been sort of a, the conduit for capital flows into mainland China. Now, if they wreck that model, and they seem to be in the process of doing that with Beijing coming in and taking over security, which is really, you know, to me, it's they're gonna use AI to basically spy on their citizens effectively. It's going to ruin that whole that whole market, I think, longer term, which means it'll have to, it'll it'll impact biggest impact impact's going to be on China, I, I would believe, and they're going to have to maybe they'll use Shanghai as the as the next financial center for the for the, for the mainland. But it's it's okay. not. But good it will disrupt problems. capital flows. It's it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. <laughs> we were going to make this the last uh, COVID video in our session or in our series. But given the spike up, we decided that we should uh, keep going for a couple more weeks. Uh, COVID doesn't want to die. COVID doesn't want to die. It wants to increase. So Wayne, another thing that is getting talked about more, you hear more about, and probably was a negative for the market this week, is that uh, Biden seems to be getting up in the polls. Trump's going down. And they're starting to hear more about Biden's increasing corporate taxes, increasing taxes on uh, people earning above $400,000. And uh, Wall Street doesn't really like that. So what, how do you view it? You know, I've been ignoring it. Uh, the betting polls, I usually watch, have started to swing hard towards Biden recently. They can swing back and forth. The strategy, Biden's strategy of hiding Biden has been working. And Trump's been dealing with the COVID and with the, the unrest. So he's uh, by just letting him fall on his, own, on his own, own lines, if you will, which seems to be working very well. At some point in time, he'll have to come out and there'll be a debate, I guess, uh, which will be interesting. You know, if he does win, in fact, and people start, I think the market will start discount, discounting that over the summer, given where the, where the polls are right now. You know, it's going to be not capital friendly. Number one, he's going to probably raise the, the corporate tax rate back to 28%, we're hearing. 
this was all his pre-COVID plan, if you will, so that could be right. could be shelved. But we, yeah. we, we anticipate he'll raise taxes to the corporate side 28%. He'll raise the marginal uh, tax rate as well. He'll put a minimum tax on corporations of 15%, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but that's not capital friendly. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, also, the get, what's going to happen with China? Will he be friendly with China? We don't know. But Elizabeth Warren apparently is going to be slated for Secretary of State. And she had very uh, dramatic policy regarding trade and, and trading, putting tariffs on on jurisdictions that weren't uh, environmentally friendly. And her some of her senior people are, are involved with Biden as well in terms of planning. So she's going to have a big impact on, I think, trade with China, which will probably hurt China, but probably good for the environment. Of course, the big issue, too, is who will take the Senate as well. You know, if the Senate, if, the, if Republicans hold the Senate, it's going to be a stalemate and you know, probably not a bad situation to be in. There'll be some middle of the road, you know, if they want to get, get they don't have the middle of the road. So we'll have to wait and see. But it's becoming a concern. We have to see Biden uh, in a debate and, and taking questions from the, from the press and everything else before we can, you know, assess this any further. But Trump couldn't have had any, you know, any worse news, news flow, and he didn't handle the pandemic that well. And, I don't think he had all the rights that well either. Uh, You're not yeah. alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those things have all hurt him. And, you know, it, it's hard for an incumbent president, president when you're in recession to even win. It's only been done, I think, once in the past. So uh, uh, this, those, those facts are not good for him. But, but things can change so fast. You know, who thought, in like in January, it looked like he was a shoe in. Uh, the economy was doing great, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we have a long, long ways to go. And so we have a long ways to go. It could be a totally different issue in, you know, come October. We just don't know. But. Anyways, we're starting to digress and probably taking up too much time. But it's an issue in the market. It's another uncertainty. So the market's not really very happy right now. So next week, uh, Ian Lusher will be on with Wayne. And, uh, you know, July 1st is around the corner. It's, so that's the start of summer. And I know a lot of people have different summer plans this summer. No, uh, no going to the traditional summer places often. And uh, no having uh, close relatives come to see you or you going to see them. So it's a different summer, but uh, it's going to be a great summer. And uh, we should all count our blessings. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much.